Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the Terry Koss Show, a wrestling podcast. I'm your host, Terry Koss, and today I'd like to take a look at WCPW's Kirby Mania. Now, WCW's Kirby Mania, uh, well, made by WCW, WCPW, was at the Liverpool Olympia in Liverpool, England. Now, how all this came about, uh, Adam Pacitti, uh, about a few weeks ago, was the general manager of WCPW, and really was letting the power go to his head. He had started started up the Pachiti Club, which consisted of him, the Swords of Essex, uh, Paul Robinson, Scott Wainwright, Bully Ray, and B. Priestley. And Martin and Martin Kirby was on a roll. He had beaten Will Ospreay just out of nowhere, won a four-man match, just was really, you know, doing really well, and the people were really getting behind him. And, um, of course, he had the match against Joseph Connors, and uh, Pachiti cost him that, so that got Kirby and Pachiti into a feud. So what happened was Pachiti said, "Okay, we'll have a match. My guys against you, uh, the handicap match. Uh, so it's supposed to be the Swords of that. A- yeah. So he says, if I win the match, you're gone from WCPW. But if you win the match, you get to become the general manager." WCPW. So the match was set on uh, an episode of Loaded. It was the Pachiti Club, the Swords of Essex, and Bully Ray against Martin Kirby. But before the match even started, but back on Loaded, Matt, Broken Matt Hardy signed the contract, so it was a three-on-two match. The Swords of Essex, Paul Ray, uh, and Bully Ray up against Broken Matt Hardy and uh, Martin Kirby. So, you know, they fight, and they, you know, get, things get happening, and, and Matt Hardy and Bully Ray fight to the back. Pachiti makes it a no disqualifications match. Kirby is able to pin one of the members of the Swords of Essex and wins. So he became the new general manager of WCPW, in which, and that's how this event all came about. So we start off the show. Martin Kirby comes out. People are all behind him. They got the glow sticks going. Everything's just... Really, really good. Of course, Bully Ray comes out to interrupt him, you know, give him whatever. Then oh, we see the w- new WCPW champion, Drew Galloway, come out. Uh, the Swords of Essex come out to attack Galloway, but the tag team champions, um, Johnny Moss and Liam Slater, come out to help him. So, Martin Kirby makes the main event. A six-man tag, Bully Ray and the Swords of Essex, Paul Robinson and Scotty Wainwright, against the WCPW champion Drew Galloway and the WCPW tag team champions Johnny Moss and Liam Slater. So we go into our first match. We see the local. We see Joe Hendry up against Drake with James R. Kennedy. Now the match match is about to start, but all of a sudden out comes a guy in a hood or a hooded yeah, a hoodie. And starts beating on Joe Hendry, and we find out it's Joseph Connors. And it kind of makes you wonder, well, Joseph Connors has entered in the WWE uh, United Kingdom Championship Tournament, and he says he wants a ma- He says he wants a match against Hendry. And, of course, Hendry has been wanting this match for a long time just to get revenge against um, Joseph Connors. So they decide, and they make it a no-holds-barred match. Our second match is uh, features the, the villain Marty Skrull, who is the, at this who is the who is the Ring of Honor Television Champion versus Gabriel Kidd with Prince Amin. Now, up to this point, Gabriel Kidd has not won any matches in WCPW. He had a match against Prince Amin. Excuse me, he became Amin's manservant, but in time, Amin grew to respect Kidd and kind of been training him that kind of stuff. Um, awesome match. Skrull is just plays the villain so great, you know, eye pokes and these and cracking the fingers and all this kind of stuff. Uh, good spots. Kid uh, hits. I still don't know what this move is called. If you are listening, please tell me what it is. I've heard it called a Lambo leap, a Green Bay plunge, something just Kenny used to do. Goes for the moon salt and only gets two. Uh, Skrull uh, ends up winning. Skrull gets Kid in a cross face chicken wing. And uh, ends up winning the match. Our next match is Lana Austin versus Ivelisse. But before the match starts, we see the Swords of Essex and B Priestley come out. B Priestley 
is holding the WCPW Women's Championship, although she is not the champion. During the last match between B. Priestley and uh, WCPW champion WCPW Women's Champion Nixon Newell, Nixon Newell retained, but B. Priestley took the belt. So she has the belt, but she is not the champion. So she comes out and sits beside um, the commentary table. So the third match. So third match begins. Uh, Evelise hit. There's some cool spots in the match. Uh, Ivelisse hits two suplexes, hits two suplexes, and then hits Fishman suplex. Only gets two. Uh, Ivelisse gets uh, Lana Austin in this deep Texas clover leaf, like it's cloated, but she's really torquing back on the legs. And but Lana Austin is able to get to the ropes. Uh, good showing by both women. Very. Both, both very good uh, women wrestlers. Uh, Ivelisse wins with a uh, spinning kick to the head, pins her, and yeah. And so Ivelisse wins the match. And then there is a nice hand. Well, yeah. And Ivelisse wins the match. Of course, Ivelisse is best known right now for uh, being in Lucha Underground. Our fourth match features Travis Banks up against the Iron Man Joe Coffey. Now, what's interesting about this is they both used to be in tag teams. Travis Banks teamed with Pete Dunne as a Strong Saw Collective, but as you all know, or if you don't, Pete Dunne has been entered in the WWE United Kingdom Championship Tournament, so that left Travis Banks on his own. Joe Coffey was teaming with his brother Mark, who has since gone back to ICW Insane Championship Wrestling in Scotland. Uh, they wrestled as the Coffees. Uh, both teams were in the AP Triple T, the Adam Pacini Tag Title Tournament, which of course both didn't win. Um, Coffee, you know how Cesaro does uh, the big swing? Coffee does the big swing, but a little differently. He does it in a few different ways. He catches, or he gets Banks in what looks like a, a butterfly suplex and swings him and swings him and swings him around and just, you know, throws him like Cesaro would. Uh, Coffee comes off the top rope with a big drop kick, only gets two. Um, they're running Coffee, or Coffee catches Banks off the ropes with a European uppercut. Uh, Coffee ends up winning the match with the Black Coffee, which is a spinning discus uh, lariat. And yeah. Our fifth match features Prospect, Lucas Archer, and Alex Gracie with James R. Kennedy. Now, little build-up to this match. Um, Drake, who is a member of Prospect, is watching the video of a WCPW coming to Orlando. And Archer and Gracie, they don't see their pictures on it. So they're like, are we going to Orlando? So they go to James R. Kennedy, who is their manager, and says, you know, what's going on? Kennedy says, I can't get you to Orlando, but I can promise you something. So he goes to the general manager, Martin Kirby, who is really nicely decked out in this pink suit, pink pants. It's pink everything in this place. Um, pink balloons, pink glow sticks. And it's, it's a really, you know, really good and pink and fun time. So Kennedy goes to him and says, can you give Prospect a WCPW tag team title match? And, um... Martin Kirby says no, because Ma Johnny Moss and Liam Slater are already involved, involved in the main event. But, he says, I'll give you a tag team match. So, he's, so Martin Kirby, so Jack the Jobber is sitting in uh, Kirby's office, and Kirby tells him, go find someone. So, Prospect is waiting for their opponents. Out come Martin Kirby. He decides, well, nobody else is going to wrestle, I'm going to wrestle. And then they get El Ligero. El Ligero, uh, the Mexican sensation, uh, great luchador wrestling uh, in England. Um, really, really, really good wrestler. Uh, there's a little bit of turbulence uh, between Kirby and Ligero. They don't like each other that well, but, you know. And uh, Adam Pacitti makes an appearance. First, you hear his music start, and then it goes into this really, really weird music, this really cheesy... Um, uh, thing because uh martin kirby keeps referring to him as adam parmesan so he has to go hand out glow sixes now he's working for uh martin kirby if you find um just look on the internet for uh wcpw's youtube page what's really nice is they have uh entrance videos and music of most of the superstars so if you look 
for the Adam Parmesan entrance video, you'll see what I'm talking about, and you'll probably laugh your head off like I did it, and, and as most of the people in uh, in Liverpool did. Um, the match is uh, pretty straightforward. Um, going good. Martin Kirby, as, a, as the general manager, has a lot of duties. So as they're wrestling, <laughs> Jack the Jobber comes from the back and gets Martin to sign a contract. Well, he's got either Archer or Gracie in a figure four. Um, the match is going on. He gets a phone call from, <laughs> from whoever, Jack the Jobber comes in with a phone. He gets, so he has to make a phone call during the match. Eligero's doing all the work. And so Jack comes back later and he has to get the mail. Of course, this distracts Kirby and Legero and Prospect pick up the win. Our next match is for the sixth match is for the WC, WCPW Internet Championship. Features Zack Sabre Jr. up against the champion Cody Rhodes. This match was unbelievable. If you've seen Zack Sabre Jr. in the Cruiserweight Classic, you know what I'm talking about. Um, match very scientific, very back and forth. Um, you know, they each used submission moves on the other. Cody used the American Nightmare, which is kind of reverse figure four. Uh, Sabre had him in the uh, Jim Briggs special, which is kind of a guillotine with a Kimura lock on it. And this match, oh, it was just unbelievable. I can't even put it into words how good this was. Excuse me. As Zack Sabre Jr., Really worked on the arm of Cody Rhodes, you know, stomping it. He can put you, he can put your body in places that it doesn't even, it's not even supposed to go. Like, he can twist you in a million different ways. And if you have not seen Zack Sabre Jr., like, uh, I cannot recommend him enough. Go look for him on YouTube. Look for him. Uh, just look for his match at Zack Sabre Jr., and you will be impressed. Uh, Cody Rhodes ends up uh, winning the match. He is able to hit crossroads, crossroads on uh, Zack Sabre Jr. And Cody does a really nice pro after the match saying he doesn't want to be a part-timer. He wants to be known as a WCPW guy because he is now the WCPW internet champion because he's <laughs> also wrestling at this point in uh, Ring of Honor and TNA. But he says, you know, and he is very passionate about what he's saying and really puts over the crowd in Liverpool like you, know, you guys are awesome and I will be back and then he asks for a beer somebody buys him one and he downs a beer after the match so that's that's pretty cool that was pretty nice on Cody's part to uh to put over the the Liverpool fans and w WCPW as a whole our seventh match was the six-man tag team match Bully Ray and the Swords of Essex I apologize saying this was the main event it's not but versus the WCPW Tag Team Champions Liam Slater and Johnny Moss, and the WCPW Champion Drew Galloway. I gotta say this right now, Johnny Moss is one of the biggest men I have ever seen. This guy has muscles coming out of places I didn't know muscles could come out of. This guy, when he flexes his... Like, his... <laughs> His biceps are bigger than my head. This guy is built like a brick house. And if you see Johnny Moss, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So the Swords of Essex both try to suplex Johnny Moss. Johnny Moss picks him up. Suplexes him, no problem. Um, Bully Ray is, you know, of course, working the heel. Um, thing does not want to get in the ring with Galloway. Galloway... Uh, you know, beats on Wainwright and, and Robinson. And, and of course, Paul Robinson is just this tiny little guy. Drew Galloway is a big man. Johnny Moss is a big man. Drew Galloway throws him around the ring like a rag doll. When you see the, when you see the matchup looking at them between Johnny Moss and Paul Robinson, it's like an adult and a little child. He picks up Robinson throws him around the ring like nothing and it's it's pretty funny actually <laughs> um bully ray of course yeah of course doesn't want to get in and, and you know does the heel tactic gets in when it's good for him 
So, you know, there's a melee. All, all six of them get together. They start fighting, beating on each other. Uh, Bully Ray always, ha always has always has the chain. So he gets the chain uh, around his hand, hits Johnny Moss with it, and puts Paul Robinson on him. And uh, Pachini Club gets the win, Swords of Essex, and Bully Ray. Our eighth match and our main event is Joseph Connors versus Joe Hendry in a no-holds-barred match. Now, I'll kind of set up how this feud went. Um, Joe Hendry and Joseph Connors started off as a tag team. Um, Joe Hendry kind of was the shining star of the tag team. Joseph Connors felt he wasn't getting enough uh, attention and all this stuff. So there was set up a, a four-way WCPW Heavyweight Championship match. It was then champion Big Demo against Rampage, against Joseph Connors, against Joe Hendry. So... Demo and um, Rampage just you know are just beating on each other. These big two got two big guys, and they just go to the back and um, well it's four so it's it's anything goes. Joseph Connors gets a chair and just what just beats Joe Andrew with it just unmercifully and hits him with a DDT and wins the WCBW Heavyweight Championship. He guards his championship like, I think Alex Shane said it best, like Gollum in the ring. Like he clutches this thing to his chest and he'll do anything he can to, um, you know, retain it. On the last pay-per-view, Drew Galloway was able to beat him for the championship. Uh, Joe Hendry was on his way to winning the steel cage match. And um, Galloway had already suffered... Uh, I don't know, broken neck, neck problems from Joseph Connors giving him a DDT in the one match they had. He was out for a couple of months. Uh, Hendry was just about to leave the uh, seal cage. And Connors said, you know, you leave, I'm going to inflict more damage on him. So, of course, Joe Hendry gets in, saves Drew Galloway. Goes to the outside. Uh, Drew gets the pin before Hendry can uh, escape the cage. So, he became the, Galloway became the new champion. So this sets it up here as Joe Henry wants a match against Joseph Connor so bad, wants to get that retribution against him for him turning his back on him. And he's he wanted a one-on-one -on -one match. He is yet to have the one-on-one -on -one match. I, I and I'm sure all the fans of WCPW thought that, well, this isn't going to happen because Connors was announced for the WWE United Kingdom Championship Tournament. But he came back, and so here we are. Uh, Connors and Henry both start on the outside, wrestling for a good, uh, fighting for a good 10, 15 minutes before they get it back in the ring. Um, Joseph, Con or Joseph Connors tries to get the Freak of Nature on Joe Henry. The Freak of Nature is basically just a fall away slam. That's Joe Henry's move. Um, tried, but it didn't work. Uh, Joe Henry tried for the Righteous Kill. Um, Joseph Connors DDT. Um, at one point, uh, Joe Henry gets Joseph Connors on the top row, gets him with a freak of nature, puts him in his arm, and just throws him from the top rope. You know, fall away slam. Uh, Joe Henry um, had a match uh, a few months back with Kurt Angle. Of course, came out on the losing came out on the losing end, but kind of learned the ankle lock from Henry. Gets this ankle lock in deep. And um, Connors had Connors taps out. So Joe Hendry finally gets his revenge, his retribution, and can close the chapter on that. A uh, few things to note: uh, Kirby Mania was available to watch on YouTube for free, which I thought was really cool. Most of their events, uh, the first match is free on YouTube, and then you go to What Culture Extra, or you go to the what culture, what culture pro wrestling's webpage and you can see the the rest of the events so uh this was was really good the very start as i said again pink everything uh kirby wears pink tights he's all wearing a pink suit um if you check out wcpw's youtube page you'll see all the uh improvements he has made to the wcpw offices everything basically in pink um, there was pink balloons, pink glow sticks, and it was just, I think it just, it's just made for a really fun time. You know, uh, match of the night, 
that for me has to go to Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, for the internet title, Zack Sabre Jr. against Cody Rhodes. Uh, Cody Rhodes is getting better every time I see him. And Zack Sabre Jr., they call him the technical wizard for good reason, you know. If you ever get the chance to see Zack Sabre Jr., I would suggest it. Uh, if you ever get, if you're on YouTube, look up Zack Saber Jr. and maybe you'll be just as impressed with him as uh, as I am. Well, that about does it for me for this week. I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Hopefully, you had as much fun listening to me as I did talking to you. Uh, feel free to follow me on Facebook at facebook.com/slash Terry Cost Show Podcast. Uh, also, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Cheeto Koss, that's C-H-E-E-T-O-K-O-S-S. As always, if you see a really cool match, feel free to send me a link. If you hear a really cool theme song, um, you know, feel free to, to send the link my way. So, for Terry Koss, I've been Terry Koss. I'll see you next time.